This article comes from NBCnews.com and was published on July 8th of this year. And it's by Zoe Richards and Lauren Egan. Uh, It tells us that President Joe Biden signed an executive order on Friday to protect access to abortion. All as part of his administration's response to the Supreme Court's ruling last month, which overturned the constitutional rights to the procedure. The order aims to safeguard access to the reproductive health care services, including abortion and contraception, protect patients' privacy and access to accurate information, and promote the safe date security of patients, providers and clinics. Uh, the White House said in a release uh, speaking at the White House on Friday, Biden, tripping over myself a little bit there, <laughs> Biden called the Supreme Court decision totally wrong-headed and extreme. This was not a decision driven by the Constitution, Biden said. The court has made clear it will not protect the rights of women. Uh, Biden signing this executive order to protect access to abortion is as our friend Cynthia McDonald would say, a step in the right direction. <laughs> and but as a non-American, I've heard whisperings that many on the left are unhappy with Biden as president. And I don't know what the feeling is with our American panelists, so I would like to know their opinion on this. Well, uh, that's a very good question. And this... This executive order, unfortunately, isn't a cure-all. It isn't even, it's barely even a fix. It's more of a discovery of what he can do because Biden himself has said he cannot fully protect the rights under Roe v. Wade. They are gone. The, The decision has been made by the court. And unfortunately, unless it gets codified, by Congress, unless there is a uh, amendment to the Constitution, which unfortunately, as much as I would like to see it happen, I don't think it ever will. So this is kind of a a stopgap measure until somebody sues the White House, because that is what we've seen over and over again. We've even seen it with the past uh, previous administration, where an executive order would be signed, and then a court would say, oh, no, you can't just stop all immigrants from coming into the United States. So it has the benefit of being tried, but I can definitely see why a lot of people are not exactly happy with the way that this uh, this particular executive order is going. Uh, Scott, do you have anything you want to chime in on that? Uh, sure, yeah. I mean, clearly this is... Um you know, basically a a Band-Aid solution, right? We're just trying to do something at this point, you know, and it really highlights the the issues that that we have with, uh, that a lot of people are having with the Supreme Court now. They're the the activism coming out of the Supreme Court. And, um, you know, executive orders by design are temporary. And, you know, once a new president comes in, then they can just whisk them away. And so, and so while, I mean, like, like Richard said, it, you know, it is a step in the right direction. Um, I would, I would agree with uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren when she says we need to, con- and she, here's the way she put it. We continue to explore every available option to protect access to abortion care. And to me, that sounds like she's putting the president to task saying, look, we got to step it up here. We got to, we got to do something. We got maybe do something with the court, which would be a more long-term solution, or like you said, Jason, um, enact some sort of law in court, encoding those rights into law. Now, of course, if we go that route, then, I mean, the laws that Congress and, and the president pass are all subject to judgment by the Supreme court. And, and so, um, you know, while that, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic that something is going to happen. Uh, I have a daughter, and uh, I'm I'm well. Not that I wouldn't be concerned otherwise, but but it's uh, but you know that that makes it a little more uh, personal to me, and and so I'm 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 worried about what I'm seeing. I'm trying to stay optimistic, um, but yeah, I would definitely like to see more 
more out of Biden. I, th I think uh, I think a lot of people were expecting more from him. And I don't know. I don't know. You know, it would what I think would really bother me the most is if this turned out to be some sort of uh, campaign strategy or something like that. If, if he was using this to draw people to the to the polls, which if you look at it with a with a just a cold eye, that might it might accomplish that it might draw people to the to the polls. But you're really playing. I mean, that's uh, the risk reward um, uh, payoff. There is just uh, oh, it's it's very uh, sketchy. And, and so. Um, so, yeah. So, again, I'm happy that something is happening. I would I would love to see something more and something more permanent. Uh, but time will tell. Time will tell. I'm 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 staying cautiously optimistic. Yeah, and and the risk would be purely on the American people, and the reward would be maybe some more power. But uh, Teo, you wanted to say something. Sure. Um, as the Latino guy in here, obviously, I have to have an opinion on what the U.S. does. Um, no, and I'm I'm serious about this. Actually, uh, I do need a strong opinion because whatever. Uh, that happens in the USA is going to be copied in my countries and all the countries around me because that's how the LATAM works, sadly. That's why I'm always so worried about how the US is going to be working or what they are going to do. And I'm with Scott in this one. Uh, first, I, I saw this and uh, let me quote from the article. Biden emphasized that the quick the quickest way to undo the Supreme Court decision would be to pass a, a law in Congress legalizing abortion access, a move that Democrats currently do not have enough votes for. And we have to admit, people should vote and they should support the uh, candidates that support their ideas, because if not, then we're going to have all these problems when everything is going down to hell and we have nobody to blame but ourselves because we didn't vote and the guys who want to take rights away from us voted for the other guy but at the same time it's like is he really worried about people is he trying to get more votes for himself and at the same time does the usa need more votes uh, more votes i mean people voting for i think it's democrats uh, yeah uh, do they need, I'm, I guess people should be voting for a guy who is not going to screw them up and everybody should uh, be doing that. Uh, so uh, people should vote for a person who is going to do the right thing. Don't vote for a specific party. Don't vote for only following what, what somebody say or is saying, but vote for the person who is going to do things right. Uh, so. Yeah, I, I don't want to just keep quoting the, the article because there is a lot of, you know, some stuff that could be called propaganda. But as I always say, people, the USA worries me. So please be conscious about the things that you are doing. Be conscious about the power that you have and how you use that power. Because you didn't get to the your current situation all of the sudden. There were many steps that had to happen before this uh this this whole situation happened also i'm worrying why isn't biden putting somebody else in in the in the court uh, supreme court doesn't he have the power to do that i don't really understand quite well your system guys so he can put somebody into position and in, into the court if there is a vacancy he can't just say you know kavanaugh you're out of here I'm going to go ahead and, and put in Merrick Garland, and I don't care what anybody says. No, he doesn't have the ability to do that. Only fill a vacancy. And we'll actually be talking about filling a vacancy in our next uh, segment. But I, I would also like to reiterate that, you know, as a nonprofit, a 501c3, we definitely cannot tell you who to vote for. We cannot tell you which party to vote for. We can tell you to to voice your opinion by voting because if you don't then you that's definitely one way where you will be giving up your voice here in america now as far as the text of the executive order it 
it's fairly lengthy. Um, and there's several bullet points uh, in there. I'm not going to go into all of them because, you know, then we'll run into several other segments. But when you read it, it's just, it, it's, there are a lot of, like Scott said, there's a lot of Band-Aid solutions. Uh, it does talk about expanding the responsibility of uh, doctors. It's talking about, you know, having better access to contraception. Uh, it also talks about setting up mobile clinics, which I don't know exactly how that would work. If it's more like a van or a trailer or whatever, it, it, it just doesn't seem quite right. But again, these are desperate times, I guess. And, and if it's something that can help, you know, women get the treatments that they need or uterus owners, the treatments that they need, then at least it has the benefit of being tried. I, I, I would just like to throw in here too. We were talking about um, expanding the court. One thing that, that we can do is increase the size of the court, but of course that would have to be in conjunction with Congress. And so, uh, so there, there are other things to be done. Uh, and I think it's worth, worth noting that, um, and if, if this is at least in part, uh, a campaign strategy, that's not necessarily a selfish, you know, it's not just a, you know, just to, just to get himself back into, into position. I mean, wh whoever controls the presidency, that's the gateway to the Supreme court. And so maintaining, uh, a, a president that is, uh, sympathetic with this uh, this particular issue will help to uh, forge and to form uh, the court of the future. And so um, so I, I so I didn't mean to say like it was like like he was disregarding uh, the issue or disregarding the half of America that this will directly affect. Um, you know, there there are worthy goals of getting more senators in there that are sympathetic to the to the issue getting more uh representatives in the house that are more sympathetic to this issue to make things like passing uh laws that encode the the abortion rights into law that would make it easier if if we have if we go that way i mean we can it can be more difficult it can be less difficult um so why not you know why not take the less difficult way and, and that'll make it a little bit more sure and a little bit more safe too yeah the important thing is that there are a lot of people who have lost their protections in 13 states possibly more and if we lose these protections we can lose more protections uh richard you you have anything else you want to add yeah, yeah, the uh, the, it, the the article does mention a couple of times uh, about um, uh, Biden mentioning going out to vote, which is it, it was it was kind of I don't know it, it it seemed kind of borderline between weaponizing the issue and genuine concern. I couldn't quite detect which side of that it was genuinely coming down on. Uh, one thing he did say to me, and, and Scott touched up on this, mentioning his own daughter earlier, and, and that was when Biden mentioned, uh, if you want to change the situation for women and little girls in this country, please go out and vote. And I'm not entirely sure that appeal is going to work on the ultra-conservative, if they listen to Biden at all. Uh, I think yeah. ultra-conservative Christians tend to view women uh as second class citizens anyway and to to an extent and i think when if if young girls or, or girls are getting pregnant they're, they're more likely to see that as kind of a fault of the left for allowing them too much freedom and, and not enough strictness and control in their lives and uh, that kind of stood out to me is it a bit of a known goal on his part for for saying that i just wanted to know what your guys opinion was on that you know it's easy to be the outsider looking in i don't you you, you say that you know conservatives look at women as second-class citizens and 
I'm going to sit here and, and I'm going to say I cannot disagree with you on that. However, I'm willing to bet that ultra conservative people would disagree with you on that, including oh, yeah, no doubt. <laughs> ultra conservative women. The, <sighs> This is this is another thing where it's like we can't paint everybody with the same brush, and I know that's not what you're doing. Um, I just want to make sure that you know nobody else is doing the same thing because, really, what a person's view is is a lot more nuanced, even when it isn't. What do you think, Tao? Um, you know, um, I I keep thinking about this um, and about Biden calling people to vote. And I want to, I want to take your mind. Did you watch the Road to El Dorado that movie? Many Please years watch ago. it. It's <laughs> amazing. Uh, at the beginning, these two guys they are friends, but they are pretending to be fighting each other. So when they are attacking each other, they are stealing everybody else's money. And I, I saw recently that scene being compared to the USA politics. You have only two parties. They pretend to be fighting to each other and. Well, uh, things don't change much, I think. And I was thinking, uh, I, I wrote around my notes that one of the problems is that, is that you only have two parties. So you see yourself forced to vote either for party A or party B. You don't vote for the candidate or you don't vote for ideas. You vote for the specific color. And that's why it's so weird to see the USA politics, uh, how they work. It's so strange that Biden was only chosen not because he was Biden, but because he wasn't Trump. And that's why everybody voted him. And it's so, so weird for me, you know, as an outsider to see how Trump still has enough power that the person that he put in there in the... Actually, I think he put more than one, uh, more than one person, I think, not sure. So those people, they are doing Trump's work and they are four, three. Wow. Three. You see, that's why it's so weird for me that th there are no vacancies, apparently. And <laughs> uh, we will be talking about that in, in the next part of in the next segment. So it's so strange that I, I, I really don't understand much about politics or how they work in the USA. And it, it looks extremely weird for me. So mm, uh, I'm, I'm still with you guys. It's, it's so weird that, yes, you need to vote, but you have only two candidates or two colors and that's it. No more options. Uh, it's sorry guys but the u.s is a, is a mess it is that's that's first past the post for you you know if, if we had ranked systems that some other countries have we might be singing a different tune but uh you know it's uh it's america if you don't like it get out i guess <laughs> at least that's what they tell us uh scott uh Let's, let's have you have the final word on this uh, segment and then we'll, well move on I was to just going to say that uh, I think if if Biden's call to vote does not appeal to ultra conservatives, I don't think he'll be heartbroken about that. <laughs> no. OK, uh, so I think we can go ahead and, and put this one to bed. It's it. Like I said we're starting off a little bit uh, rough because we're we're in an interesting place you know it's that old probably not chinese proverb may you live in interesting times 